the knives start off as pieces of uh, steel similar to this then uh, I physically cut the shape out first of all I cut a very very rough shape um, you can see that I've applied engineers blue onto one side I've scribed in the, the profile of the knife and I'll cut just outside that profile very roughly and coarsely on the, this this metal cutting bandsaw here it's, it's a very slow process um, and I'll put some footage in now of me cutting uh, with this saw and you'll see how how slow the progress really is uh, the thinner the steel it will cut a bit a bit quicker but not a lot this is this is four mil thick steel that I'm cutting through at the moment uh, and as you can uh, appreciate it takes uh, some time to actually uh, cut around the profile once the profiles formed I then move on to um, once the profile has been cut out very roughly I then move on to this machine here, you can just see the corner of it this is um, my uh, I think um, Lancaster grinder, I think that's what Mike, Mike calls it MP Custom Knives uh, MP Grinder Mike Palmer um, if anyone's thinking of getting into knife making in the UK uh, I would definitely uh, pursue an inquiry to Mike uh, because the MP custom grinder is of all the free grinders I got here it is the best one uh, it's just a nice machine to use with lots of different um, attachments I've got a video on the MP grinder so I'll, I'll put a link uh, up in the top right up here uh, take you to that video um, can't, yeah, I can't say any, anything bad about uh, this, this machine to be honest with you but the process in building a knife from scratch like this it, it is a time consuming one there are other ways of ex expediting the process you know I can get them water jetted or laser cut or whatever um, but for me somehow you know it takes away something uh, it doesn't take away anything from the finished product but for me you know it, the knowledge that I've actually had hands on from the very get go uh, apart from actually having formed and forged a piece of steel this is this is ground flat stock 01 carbon steel and it comes uh, fairly uh, uniform so the, the process of building the knives is one it's known as uh, stock removal where you are continually removing metal uh, material from the billet uh, to get to the final knife profile that you want and that's, that's what I do if anyone's wondering about the actual uh, bandsaw itself this is a, a bandsaw which is specifically designed for cutting metal um, and this, this vertical section will, will pivot over uh, can lock it into place but I found there's no need to uh, and it's designed so that you can it's got clamps I'm sat on I've got a, a soft pad that I'm sat on but there are, there's a vice underneath here which you can clamp bar stock into etc and use it as a chop saw or in this configuration I've got it upright with uh, a homemade metal table on it um, and it's a generic saw, uh, you get it from, I bought this from a, a local um, shop in Swindon called Machine Mart, and it, but it's made by Clark uh, and I've had it oh, crumbs, at least eight years now, it's got a little quarter horsepower motor um, and provided you that you're not, not cutting massive thick steel, it seems to do the job, you know. Um, no doubt they're better saws, faster saws, but for the type of cottage industry that I am, um, this saw's been ideal for me. Uh, I also use it for cutting G10, because if you if you cut G10, there's a piece of G10 there. If 
you cut G10 with a, a normal wood cutting blade or a wood bandsaw, within seconds you'll blunt the blades because the G10 uh, has got um, glass fibre in it. Uh, it just dulls blades, wood, wood blades it instantly. But the metal cutting blades, uh, they, they last quite a bit longer. I'll generally get through one, uh, one batch of knives, that's about six knives. I'll cut out six profiles and maybe the handles with the, G, you know, cut the G10 for those six knives as well. And then the blade is basically done then. Uh, blades, uh, they come in packs. There's six, five or six. We've got a couple left there, so uh, that'll keep me going for the rest of this month and into next month. Um, so it's good, a good saw for the hobbyist semi-professional knife maker, I'd say. And I tend to sit here on the bed of the saw. It's got a very strong, sturdy bed to it. Metal, it's all metal construction. There's a handle here which you can use for uh, winding the um, the vice back and you can clamp stock in here and as I say the actual uh, saw will tilt down and then uh, then cut automatically using gravity uh, there's also a, a spring and adjustment here which uh, you can adjust the, the amount of pressure the actual saw blade uh, puts on the piece you're going to cut there's a depth measurement device here, so if you want to set the depth, you can use that, but I don't use that for the type of um, use that I use this saw for in the upright position. It's uh, the most suitable for me personally. Under this compartment, uh, this is where there's a pulley. There's a micro switch there, so that when the, the doors open, the micro switch engages and it turns the motor off. And you can adjust, uh, you can, the motor tilts up, you slacken it off, motor tilts up, and then you can adjust the belt to different pulleys. You've got three different speed settings, slow, medium, and, and fast. At the moment, I think I got it set to the, the slowest setting, so I've got biggest pulley on the motor, smallest pulley on the, uh, the gearbox side. This gives, this gives me the slowest, uh, the slowest speed. And I find that when I'm using, um, a, a, say, a 16 tooth per inch blade, uh, I'm better off having a slower speed setting. So that's that's a look at the uh, the metal cutting bandsaw that I have in my workshop. It's not an expensive machine. I'm not sure what they are now, but uh, as I say, quite affordable really. The bandsaw blades I'm using are the ones I got from the, the shop as well. I, I, it's, it's a local shop to me, so it's just, just down the road. Whenever I need new blades, just pop down there and buy a new packet. They're probably not the best. I think you can get bimetal type blades which last a lot longer and probably cut a bit faster. But I just find it just convenient really to, to do it the way I do it. That's the uh, rough profiles of these two knives cut out now. Uh, this will eventually be a camp knife and this one will eventually be a extra large classic. Um, the next stage for shaping these will be on the on the grinder which is just over there at a shop and uh, I'll make that the next video and you'll see how I uh, refine the profile of these knives and take them on to the next stage. Uh, and then uh, obviously um, at some point, hopefully this week, they'll go into the heat treat. Thanks for watching, I hope you've enjoyed it and it's been of use to somebody. Please hit the like button and subscribe if you want to, or if you've uh, gained anything from it. If you haven't, then give it the thumbs down. Uh, apparently it will help the algorithm. Thanks for watching, bye for now.